right after watching the live stream of OpenAI's GPT 4.5 announcement, I think I can completely sympathize with what the report of the week meant when he said, My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. Like, I have so many questions. What do you mean by it just hallucinates less? What do you mean key improvements is just it feels more natural? And what do you mean by only comparing it to GPT-40? Even though I am not an OpenAI stan, I still feel like I'm about to crash out. Like, after all the hype around it, what? What? That's it? And to be honest, the most shocking part for me is that it completely underperformed against DeepSeek V3. Not R1, by the way. I am at a complete loss of words. It was so shocking to me that I sat there in complete silence looking at my stock portfolio nose diving into the trenches and that doesn't even make me feel anything but you know what makes me feel something that is today's sponsor mapmood.ai which gives you access to state-of-the-art LLMs and image generators all for 10 bucks a month mapmood.ai is an all-in-one platform that provides you access to all the top tier text generation models image generation models and web search functionalities ranging from o3 mini deepseek r1 claw 3.7 gemini midjourney flux and recraft all within a great deal that is only 10 bucks, it is already cheaper than paying for any one of their monthly subscriptions. So if you want to save some bucks while being able to experience the state of the art models, definitely check out mapmood.ai using the link down in the description and thank you mapmood.ai for sponsoring this video. I don't want to say we hit a wall because there is still a lot of room for improvements, but for the fact that OpenAI, which was one of the pioneers at pumping out some of the best models in the past few years, GPD 4.5 feels like the final season of Game of Thrones. It feels so rushed. It's a different kind of rush compared to Grok 3, because in GPT 4.5 system card, they still completed a lot of the safety measures, unlike Grok 3 that was saying the most unhinged things ever, but benchmark wise, it was underwhelming. Since GPT 4.5 is a base model and not a reasoning model, we have to compare it apple to apple. So using the base model benchmark from Grok 3, you can tell on the Amy 24, which is a math benchmark, GPT 4.5 is a bit lacking in that department, with Grok 3 mini also surpassing GPT 4.5. However, it does beat Grok Grok 3 Mini, but Grok 3 Mini only on the science benchmark. Compared to DeepSeek V3, which is an open source model that was released two months ago, it outperformed GPT 4.5 on math and coding benchmarks, with GPT 4.5 only beating DeepSeek V3 on science and multilingual benchmark. On third party benchmarks like Ader Coding Benchmark, it sits at a jaw dropping low 45%, with DeepSeek V3 beating it at 48%. Not only that, look at the amount of money they spent on running the benchmark compared to DeepSeek V3. $183.18 versus 34 cents. What is going on here? It seems like the wall OpenAI is hitting is the lack of innovations. DeepSeek has talents that can create insane research papers on how to efficiently train and run models, while OpenAI has not really published anything revolutionary as of recent and has been relying on scaling the past few years. With the OpenAI devs during the announcement livestream saying that GPT 4.5 is a huge model and hinting that they have trouble making it work, I think it's not looking great for OpenAI. With GPT 4.5 being the next iteration of GPT 4.0 and its main focus being pre-training, seeing OpenAI having a hard time to compete with a two months old open source model definitely feels a bit off. And saying GPT 4.5 is rushed isn't really a good excuse either. With DeepSeek V2 and GPT 4.0 shipped at around the same time, but DeepSeek V2 being much inferior, DeepSeek V3 is still announced two months earlier than GPT 4.5. On top of that, the new GPT 4.5 can't even outperform V3 across all the benchmarks even though OpenAI has so much more money and talent. So one could reasonably expect they should be able to make something better and faster, right? Right? My opinion might change when I get access to GPT 4.5 because I refuse to pay a $200 subscription just to access it one week early. But can you believe that the highlight of the entire announcement live stream is just them saying that it can now answer questions more naturally? Like sure, maybe it hallucinates way less and can now top the human preference leaderboards, but this is not the ambitious open AI I once knew. Where's my napkin to website demo? Where's the insane math capabilities that their model has always been able to achieve? They claim that this version version is so highly focused on the pre-training stage, but I feel like they didn't even put in the best training data they could to create the best ever base model. They literally have the backdoor to the hardest math benchmark in the world, but they can't even beat DeepSeek V3 on Amy24. This is absurd. <clears throat> well, sorry, that is not the most absurd part, of course. As you have probably guessed from looking at the Ader coding benchmark, its API price is absolutely disgusting. What do you mean it costs 500 times the price compared to DeepSeek V3, while it has 
has pretty much the same performance. And compared to GPT-40, it is 12 times more expensive just for a 2 to 4 times improvement. But you know what's the funniest part of all this? DeepSeek this week is having an open source week where they already shared 5 repositories that are mostly about GPU efficiency and optimization. On top of that, they are giving a special 50% discount across all their APIs. They just accidentally mocked OpenAI. What a crazy timeline we live in. Maybe I'll review GPT-4.5 when it's finally normal and in the meantime, I'll probably review Clock 3.7 versus Grok 3 because I actually have a lot to say after coding with both of them. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy these types of cutting edge crash out, I mean news, you should check out my newsletter where I cover the latest and the juiciest research papers that I might not have time to cover in videos. So if you enjoy learning about the cutting edge of AI, definitely give that a look. Thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Deegan, Migulim, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shainer, Marcelo Ferreria, Zion Sheep, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.